Hello and welcome to this MF Corner special on YouTube. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic that is solution oriented funds. This is something that we get a lot of questions about as well. So to answer all of those, I have with me Mrin Agarwal who is a financial educator and also director at FinSafe India Private Limited. Mrin, as always, thank you for taking out the time and speaking to us on this special uh, mutual fund corner that we are doing. Like I said, you know, we get a lot of questions on this as well, where the key question is really, why should someone look at a solution-oriented fund for whatever it is, for retirement or for your children's uh, education? Why is it important to look at a solution-oriented fund over anything else? If, say, you're willing to stay invested for that same period of time. So what would you say to someone who has this uh, question? Good afternoon, Pavitra, and it's lovely to be here today. Yes, uh, certainly uh, what happens is that sometimes people want to bucket their investments as per their goals. So what happens is, let's say you're trying to save for retirement or you're trying to save for child education and you, let's say, choose a flexi-cap fund, right? So you may not be able to bucket it properly or, or you know, say that, or all right, this investment is for this financial goal, right? And you might not be able to stick with it for the long term as well. So sometimes what happens is that people prefer to get into investments that are tagged or bucketed towards certain goals. And that could be one of the reasons for looking at investments like this. Okay, that makes sense. Also, there's just that mental block, right? If I've saved this money for a certain purpose, I'm not going to touch it no matter what. So maybe that helps as well. But Rin, take us through what you think are some of the key advantages as well as disadvantages of getting into this kind of fund. So I think one of the biggest advantage of following this strategy of investing into funds which are meant for a specific goal is the fact that you will tend to remain invested, right? Because today the biggest issue that I see is that let's say somebody got into any category of fund and that fund category was performing well and then suddenly the fund category stops performing. So what people tend to do is that they tend to exit and they start chasing other performing categories, right? Now, normally, if you would be invested in a fund that is meant for a specific goal and called like a children's education fund or like a retirement fund, you would actually not look at redeeming investments from here. Also, there is some amount of lock-in uh, period that's also there that would be a deterrent as well. But as such, you know, what happens, I think mentally you prepare yourself to say that, hey, I can't touch this money. And, um, you know, so I think that's the biggest advantage of this fund, basically, other than the fact that it allows you to save an in a instrument that has equity exposure towards a long-term financial goal. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So in that context, then, would you say that um, everyone should look at a solution-oriented fund? Because a lot of goals, for example, would be common for most of us, right? Uh, retirement, for example, is something that most of us would want to plan for. Do you think it makes sense for everyone to consider, you know, including a solution-oriented fund in their portfolio? I think it makes sense for people who find it very difficult to do that demarcation uh, for people who find it very difficult to figure out where to invest. Now, even if you know how much you need to invest for your child education goal or for your retirement goal, sometimes you find it very difficult to figure out which fund to go. And, you know, this is one of the reasons that I see people buying a lot of the insurance uh, schemes because those schemes are sold for these purposes itself and they just find it easier to invest into something that's sold for a particular goal, right? So I think this is really meant for people who find it very difficult to otherwise figure out what fund to buy for a particular goal or do the demarcation in terms of holding. Hmm. So it's kind of uh, also, you know, forcing yourself to be disciplined and saying that, you know, this money is put aside and you are going to be saving this amount, whether you, uh, you know, you might change your mind in the next few months, but this money is put aside for now. Uh, Mirren, what would you say is a good age to start doing this? Because uh, for a lot of people in their 20s, 30s, they feel like retirement is too far away. They don't know when is a good time to start. Similarly, for your child's education as well, should you start when they're, you know, still toddlers? Uh, these are a lot of the questions that we do get. So do you think earlier the better? Of course, earlier the better. Two things. Every five years that you delay saving for retirement, the amount that you'll have to invest actually doubles. So, you know, you should start saving for it in 20s 
also uh, given our lifestyle our ever changing lifestyle and our lifestyle expenses will only increase given that fact it's even more important to start saving early so that you can build up a good corpus now as far as children's education is concerned i think you should start investing the moment the child is born only for one reason that the inflation on higher education is above 10% and if you really want to try and build a big corpus for education a lot of kids now want to go abroad for study so if you you know that requires a lot of money it requires at present if you want to send your child abroad it's going to cost you anywhere between 20 to 50 lakhs a year right so then you're looking at a corpus of about 2 crores and in order to save that amount you will have to invest into something for the long term and that something should have equity as well and it should be able to beat the 10% inflation so hence you need to start investing as soon as the child is born okay so earlier the better is definitely you know the the way to go over here and uh, as soon as you can is perhaps when you should look at these rin uh, these are funds which are offered by so many amcs right and it can become a very intimidating task to pick which one to go for because essentially they're offering you the same thing they're giving you that same uh, solution oriented fund but how do you decide which one you want to go for here considering you have so many options um well i think some of the older ones also have atc benefit if i'm not mistaken but when you look at the newer ones i think the first thing of course uh, one of the things that i saw was that uh, uh, there are certain fund houses most of the funds are actually like balanced funds most of them typically have about uh, 40% equity and the balance in debt um and there are some more aggressive ones as well like couple of the retirement funds i, I saw were called as a retirement equity fund so of course they had like a higher exposure to equity so i think you know first and foremost uh, thankfully the number of funds available in this category is not very high um i think what you should do is uh, you know uh, look at first of all what is the debt and equity exposure um certainly if you have time on your hand right which means that if you have more than 7 years for your goal to happen then i i really think that you should look at the funds which have the higher equity exposure for the reasons that i just explained earlier in the earlier question um and i think that should be criteria number 1 to look at what is the debt and equity exposure and how does it really tie in with your goal and your risk taking ability as well so that that's criteria number 1 you know and i think that would be the overriding criteria that i would want to look at over just going by past returns okay so that really breaks it down and helps the viewer decide you know how to uh, how to pick which fund is right for them the debt to equity exposure is something that you can look at and then see whether that fits into what you are looking at for yourself or not but mrin with that we're going to wind down on this special thank you very much for taking out the time for this quick chat and taking us through uh, you know a lot of the questions that we get quite often on solution oriented uh, fund so thank you for joining us and i hope that helps all of our viewers to really understand how you should approach this category and how you can pick a fund in this category uh, category that's going to work best for you